the brand I'm about to introduce to you will determine how old you are. So if you ever saw this brand or have used this brand before it was reintroduced in the market, you should be probably in your third marriage. This is Founders Connect Africa. Mr. Bennett. Hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well indeed. Yeah, thank yes. you so much for giving us this opportunity uh -huh. to be here. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah. Yes. This is a factory. This is a factory. This mm -hmm. is where we make all these delicious uh, treetop juices yeah. uh, that we're selling across Kenya and East Africa. Okay. Yeah, and this is a small uh, a warehouse, mm. the, the production facilities on that side. Yeah. Then at the back, you can see the, the storage facilities the where storage. we keep our raw materials and packaging. Yes. Wow, that was very interesting. I didn't know it was that. It has a lot of work, like coming up with a product like this. It yeah. does, it does. It does. Yes. How many employees do you have? We have 78 employees, cutting across production, sales and marketing, finance, mm -hmm. and logistics. Right. Yeah. What's the capacity for this? 6,000 liters an hour. An Six, hour? 6,000 an hour. That's wow. what we're able to do, yes. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so you. now we can go sit down and probably you can um, give me more information. Okay, let's go have a seat and i give you more details about the these operations here. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Njoroge, for giving us this opportunity to come to your um, factory and see how uh, Treetops is doing. I remember Treetops when I was young, when I was pretty young, I was, I think, two, three years old like, or four years old, I could remember the brand. And then it disappeared in the market. And now um, a few years I've been seeing it at the supermarket. Maybe you can um, start with us and tell us how that journey began and how you brought about Treetops to the market. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Uh, my name is Bernard, uh, Bernard Njoroge, the managing director of Sky Foods Limited. Mm -hmm. uh, Sky Foods is the company that brought back Treetop in, in Kenya. This is our sixth year in, in business. Sixth year? Uh, sixth year in business. Mm -hmm. And uh, before then, Treetop was a Unilever brand. It was the only juice brand selling in Kenya in the 60s, uh, 70s, yeah. 80s, yeah. and the early 90s. Early 90s. So in uh, 93, 94, it came onto the market. And the reason I got is that the Unilever could not, could not make profits based on the, the price that was set by the price controller at Treasury. Remember that time yes. Kenya was, uh, was not liberalized before the economy was liberalized. Okay. And then number two, uh, a, a very strong competitor came into the market called mm -hmm. Quencha, and then they came up with plastics. They brought in uh, smaller packs, bigger packs, yeah. uh, 500 ml, one liter, 1.5, two liter, five liter. Yeah. And three top was, if you remember, it was that iconic glass bottle. Yes. And you remember, were like, we cannot put our juice in a, in a PET bottle. <laughs> and because of, because of those two reasons, yeah. it, it came out of the market and it was out for 19 years yes. until I discovered it was available for sale. Yeah. And I went and bought it and uh, reintroduced it into the Kenyan market. So you found out it was available for sale. Had you already started the company? No, abso absolutely not. Because yeah. if you look at my history, I, I cut my teeth mm -hmm. in terms of beverage uh, productions and marketing in the big multinational companies in Kenya that includes the Monte and Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. And every time I would introduce a new brand or a new flavor, I used to do focus groups, interviews. Yeah. I would put, put, put people in a room mm -hmm. and get them to taste the product. And as they tasted the product, some people would come in and say, this one reminds me of Treetop. <laughs> so over a 10 year period, when people keep on talking about the same, same brand, yeah. it planted a seed in my mind and I said, when the time comes, I'll go for it. Let's go back to what you were doing before. You've already said that you were in this big marketing, um, multinational um, companies, FMCG. Um, did you ever think that you wanted to start um, a business after leaving employment? No, actually, actually no. Because you see, I was hired at an at entry level, uh, management level uh -huh. in the Monte. 
then I grew the ladder to become the Africa director. Africa director. Africa director for, for the brand. Yeah. And I was doing very well. I mean, the corporate uh, sector loved me. I was getting promoted. I was getting high salaries. Yeah. I remember by the time I was deciding to quit and jump off the cliff to start the new business, mm -hmm. I was earning about a million dollars, a million shillings a month. Yeah. So I wasn't really thinking that I would ever start my own business. Yeah. The trigger for me to start the business is when I realized uh, three top was available. Then I looked at the, the value I'd build for yeah. brands like the Monte. I mean, from scratch to over $30 million a year. Yeah. And I could see the enterprise value that I had uh, created. Yeah. And I said, wow, I mean, Treetop is available, I can buy it, I can get people to back me up. Yeah. And they, I said, let me go and try. Wow, that was a brave move. Yeah, it was a brave move, actually. You would call it like jumping over a cliff. Yeah, because you were comfortable. Yeah, that was very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Sitting in the corner office, you could get your cappuccino or your beck and call. You have yeah. people working for you, drivers and stuff like that. Yeah. Then all of a sudden you're deciding, let me go and do it on my own. But of course, I had, I had people who were backing me up. Because if you look at the investment we put here, it was yeah. not only the money they had, it was all my savings. Yeah. But as I got a lot of family and friends, yeah to back me up, to, to, start, to start up the business. You used all your savings. How much of the savings? Uh, it's a big number. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big number. Uh -huh. uh, because you see, you not start this factory with little money. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. the big number plus the money that I got from other from investors. Family and yeah, family yeah. and friends. But yeah. total investment mm -hmm. is in upwards of now $3 million. Wow, that's a lot. So how were you able to convince people that this, this product, you're going to do it? And, and they gave you money. Because of the name Treetop, you know, yeah. the Treetop brand has that nostalgic value. Mm -hmm. People who were brought up with it, they were, when I was launching, they were probably early 30s, mid 30s. Okay. They were now the, the mothers and the fathers of the kids. Yeah. And they had very good memories about the Treetop. So I knew these people, when they find the product in the market, mm -hmm. they will buy it and go and share it with their children. Yeah. You know, the good memories of Treetop mm -hmm. to remind them of when they were growing up. Yeah. So I knew because of that, yeah. I would be able to get investors to back me up. Okay. Secondly, the people I went to uh, for funding were my age. I mean, they were all brought up in Twitter. They remember the brand, how strong it was. And somebody with my, with my kind of credentials, having worked in Del Monte, in the Coca-Cola company, for over 15, 20 years, uh, this is somebody who understands juice. Really, is not somebody who's trying his hand into it. <laughs> so I understand. Uh, yeah, I'm a juice, I'm yeah, a juice dog juice. in Africa. Yeah. Uh, I call, I tell people, yeah. if you want to do juice and you're not talking to Bernard in Africa, you're making a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So you, uh, they, they, they were able to back you up and, 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 and you began. How was the journey of, of now rebuilding a brand that was out of the market? It has been very, very tough yeah. and also very, very challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you're coming in a, in a very competitive sector. Before Three Top was introduced, if you went to the supermarket, you could count up to 15 different brands, brands of juices, yeah. cutting across the plastic bottles, cutting across the, the tetras, including imported brands from South Africa, yeah. from Egypt, from Turkey, uh -huh. and also locally made. So it's a very, it was a very, very competitive environment. Uh -huh. But I knew that I could do it because I have a brand. I knew I'll be able to build a very, uh, very good tastes that the Kenyans are used to. And then I also using my experience, I had uh, a lot of innovation in terms of new flavors. One of our biggest in innovation in Treetop has been the strawberry and banana. No other, no other company makes this kind of a flavor. Yeah. And it's a fantastic uh, chaser, especially for vodka. Yeah. When, you have, <laughs> when you have a party at home mm -hmm. and you want to really treat your guests, you need to buy our, our strawberry banana, yeah. then you use it to mix so there's a chaser for vodka. A chaser they will, for vodka. They will always come for it. Yeah. They'll always remember yeah. your party. Yeah. So because of that innovation that I had gained working for these guys, mm -hmm. it was easier for me to extend it. Because I, if you remember, Street Top was only orange. Yes. Orange squash yes. in a 700 ml bottle. Mm -hmm. If you look at the range that now we have, we have, we have a mango, yeah. we have the original, original taste of orange for, yeah. tet, for Street Top, yeah. we have strawberry and banana, we have a tropical, mm -hmm. we have a pineapple. And then we have various packages. We have a 500 ml, yeah. we have a one liter, we have two liter, we have a three liter, yeah. and we also have, we have the Tetra Packs. So it's really a, an expanded range. So I knew by getting the trademark Tritop, I'll introduce the original 
the taste pass, of what the, the person was the original one that people remember. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Then extend the range to cover all these new innovations mm. and packs. Okay. Yeah. Um, did you do a lot of advertising at the beginning? No, I haven't done any advertising because initially <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted is was to build distribution. Yes. Because you don't want to do in, uh, go into advertising before you build distribution. Yeah, yeah. So that people can get the products uh, within an arm's length of desire. Yeah. So that's what we have been doing in the last, in the last uh, five years. But five we have years. sold now in, in Kenya. Kenya is our biggest market, mm -hmm. contributing about 80% of our sales. Mm -hmm. uh, Tanzania is coming up very, very strongly, especially the Tetra Packs. Uh, Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, we have Rwanda, and uh, Southern Sudan. And a couple of weeks ago, I was in, I was in DRC, Eastern DRC, in yeah. Goma yeah. and uh, Butembo. And there the opportunities is absolutely amazing. Amazing. amazing, yes. Amazing. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, how is the juice business? Um, what are the risks that are there? Um, are you guys definitely afraid of the multinationals that come in and the imported, imported stuff? What, how is the business? The business uh, as I said earlier, the, the juice category is very competitive. We have a lot of, uh, the competitors are many. We have local, dominant players, multinational with deep pockets, and even local guys, because the, the locals now are controlling the juice sector in Kenya. They are the number one. Wow. We, have, we have managed to edge out the competition, but that's, that's my competitor. <laughs> so they are big, they have deep pockets, yeah. they are doing a lot of innovation. So it is not an easy, it's not a walk in the park. You have mm -hmm. to work really hard. You have to make sure all, all, your, all your things are right. Your taste is right, mm -hmm. the price is right, the margins to the trade, that is to the wholesalers mm -hmm. and, the, and the retailers is right. And of course, the, the price to the consumer is affordable. That uh, recommended retail price has to be affordable. Mm -hmm. So it is not a walk in the park. You have to really invest in distribution. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest challenges I faced was uh, building the distribution from scratch. Okay. Because if you look at Kenya, Kenya has about like over 370,000 outlets. Here we're talking about supermarkets, we're talking about uh, uh, dukas, uh, kiosks, uh, bars, hotels, mm -hmm. restaurants where juice, juices are normally sold. Mm -hmm. It has taken me three to four years to build and configure that whole distribution network. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want to Right on the distribution network that I built for other companies. They had yeah. to start. So you actually built your, your yes, own? Yes, my own, my own. I have a network of distributors across East and Central Africa. Wow. All the major urban uh, towns in Kenya. You mm -hmm. go to Meru, you go to Nakuru, you go to Kisi, mm -hmm. Kisumu. We have a treat of distributor. In addition, we are selling to all the modern trade outlets uh, the Carrefour, mm -hmm. the Naivas, yeah. the Quick Mart, and they're giving us very, very good support. How is that support? Um, from other countries. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good products. support. Number one, they, they bring in the forex because they buy in, in US dollars. Yeah. Uh, number two, they collect their products from the factory. So you don't have to have the problems of tracking the product from here to Kampala, to mm. Dar es Salaam, to mm. Goma, yeah. to Kigali. So they, they have come the, and collect the product. They come and themselves. collect the product from yeah. there. And they give you cash in advance. Mm. So it helps in, in your working capital. Mm. Number two, the reason why people came in is that Treetop was an East African brand. So when it launched in Kenya, we started getting inquiries from all those markets. And I could see traders coming in from Tanzania, from Uganda, mm. asking us, would you, would you sell to us the product? And then, of course, we, we, we seize that opportunity and really push the brand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Five years down the line, you risk it all. How do you feel? I am very confident. <laughs> I am confident that Treetop, in the next five years, will be the number one uh, juice brand in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Across all the categories, the Tetra Packs, and ready to drinks mm -hmm. will be the number one. Yeah. Why am I so confident about that? I've, I've spoken to my consumers. They, they love the taste. Uh, there's no one in this, in this category who can beat the taste of, uh, of a tree top. It's unique taste. We are using very premium raw materials. I'm importing oranges from a special location in Spain called Valencia. We're paying top euro for it. My competitors won't do that mm. because they, they, they don't want to, to, spend, to, to spend a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. If you look at my, uh, my uh, apple, it's coming from Poland, you know, in a unique uh, location in Poland. Mm -hmm. Then if you look at my tropical, I'm the only guy who has a tropical juice which has 10 different fruits. Most of my competitors have three or four fruits, they mm -hmm. call it tropical. Mine has 10. It has kiwi, it has apple, it has passion, it has orange, it mm -hmm. has, you can imagine, even papaya. So because of that taste credentials and the, and the affordability mm -hmm. and the effort you're putting in terms of building the distribution, mm -hmm and building an emotional connection with our consumers. I am confident in five years, we're gonna be number one. Number one? Number one in Kenya. Uh, 
You can't wait for that. <laughs> so you to told me about building a distribution. I think that many people who are wondering how you did it. Um, maybe you can give us um, a few tips on that. Yeah, uh, when you're when creating a distribution network, you, you have really to do a lot of legwork. Uh, I would travel across the country, go scout for various distributors. I didn't go for the bigger guys. Mm -hmm. Because you go for the bigger guys, they really, you don't, they, don't, they don't care. You, they, 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 you, they, they don't care about you because they are small. Your volumes initially are small. These are guys who are turning over maybe a million dollars a month. They will not give you time. Mm -hmm. So I went for medium-sized wholesalers and I convinced them to keep my product. Then I invested in motorbikes. And this motorbike guy would approve the product. I sell into this wholesaler. Then the motorbike sales guy would take the product and start selling it across, across all the, the kiosks, the and, kiosks and dukas around there. Mm -hmm. okay? That's yeah. how I've done it. And every major urban town in Kenya, you'll find we have a treetop distributor mm -hmm. who is supported by a motorbike salesperson. Yeah. Then of course, for the modern trade, we I had networks I had built. Remember, you live yeah. of your networks. Yeah. I had fantastic relationships with the big retailers. And we've got very, very good support. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable. The support we've got from uh, those modern trade and people like Naivas, very supportive. Mm. Kafu, when they came in here, I think I was among the very few people to be listed in Kafu. Mm. Look at people like Quickmans and Eastmans and all the big supermarkets. Mm. They really, really supported the brand. Mm. Yeah. Do are you affected by the loss of? I, I think I don't know whether you were still in the market when the big supermarkets were of course i was affected of course yeah. just like everyone in fmcg <laughs> we were all affected yeah. we would pray that maybe we don't see any other one coming down like yeah. that but yeah. we are affected just like every other person mm -hmm. because we trusted them we supplied the products to them and we believed in them yeah but i'm hopeful that they'll all come back yeah what do you think is ailing that sector mm. because you no know, we have another brand that looks like it's it's I think they expand. I think they expand too much. Probably, I think. Uh, I think they, they, they expand too. I wish they could scale down the expansion. I think to me, that that's the biggest problem. And I wish they could understand who is their number one customer. The number one customer is not the guy who walks in with the basket. He's the supplier. Because if the supplier stops, the guy who walks in to pick up the basket doesn't walk in and pick the basket, and now things goes south. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, what would be your advice to someone who is interested in joining this business? I would ask as many Kenyans as possible to jump off the cliff and join the entrepreneurial route. Mm. Because look at this country. We are, j we are getting about 100,000 guys coming out, graduates. Yes, graduates every year. Every year, coming out of universities. Every county has a, uni has a university. Mm. So we've got all these young people coming out. Where do they get jobs from? If all of us are going to be sticking in our corner offices, and having a 10, 10, uh, one million dollar, one million salary a month. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't really trickle down. Look at, look at Sky Foods. We started in 2011. Mm -hmm. We now have 78 employees, uh, cutting across production mm -hmm. and finance, uh, sales and marketing, yeah. logistics. Okay, and so you can imagine why I didn't do that. I'm now bringing livelihood to 78 people. Mm. And oh, that is an, there's an effect. Is an, is a, yeah, there's a, yeah, yeah. what do you call it? That effect. Yeah. yeah. And they have formed a circle. Now they're able to borrow money to build their own houses, mm. to buy their cars, to wow. buy their refrigerator. Yeah. I'm very proud of, of that when I see that I'm able to put livelihood of 70 people uh, each month. Oh, yeah. So there's one more thing I wanted to ask about. The be be before, you, before you say one more thing, I would yeah. like you to taste mm -hmm. our delicious a three top uh, mango. Uh -huh. And you tell me what you, th what you think about the, okay. the brand. Three top mango juice brand. Mm. Very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's it's I made like it. it's made from mangoes that we buy from uh, local. This is the only product that we buy local mm -hmm. local raw material mm -hmm. because the orange we import, apple we import, tropical import, but yeah. mango we buy from, from uh, farmers local. across uh, yeah. across Kenya. In fact, that's what that's the question I wanted to ask. I've had a lot of your raw materials come from outside. Yeah, is it because? we lack capacity to have no it's not really a, it's not it's not really a capacity issue in kenya the, the issue is that um, um tropical fruits are grown in this climate because we in kenya is in a tropical climate yeah so you can grow pineapple you can grow mango you can grow um, uh, papaya and watermelon 
When it comes to orange, orange is a Mediterranean fruit. It only does well in Mediterranean climates. Okay. You find that in, in, in South Europe, of, uh, Spain and Italy, mm -hmm. and also Brazil. Apple is a deciduous crop. It goes, grows well in deciduous climates. We find that in Poland, in South Africa, and also in Greece. And then, of course, the tropical, you have to mix the best from every world. So all that is done in Germany and then we bring in. But for mango, we are impacting over 3,000 farmers. Because you can imagine the farmers are across the Tana River yeah. who are growing mangoes in central province. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of processors who have come in. They buy the raw mangoes mm -hmm. and they squeeze the pulp. They put the pulp for us in a drum. Mm -hmm. They bring it to a factory. And then we make that delicious treat of juice you have just tasted. Yeah. Interesting. Good stuff. I like this. I like this. So th is there more space in the industry? Where, where do you see opportunities in um, the manufacturing industry especially? The category is growing, especially the juice. Mm -hmm. the, man the population is growing every year. We are adding about a million people into our population in Kenya and also yeah. in East Africa. Yeah. Then the middle class guys are also growing. As the economies are expanding, a lot of people are getting added into the middle class. Mm -hmm. And the middle class consumers like this kind of product. So every year we are seeing about 10-11% growth in this category. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we hope it to continue like that in the next uh, foreseeable future. Okay. So there's space, I mean, there's space. space. And again, mm -hmm. if you look at uh, the offering here, we're just offering fruits. That's a mango juice you're drinking. Mm -hmm. I see opportunities in milk and juice combination. Yeah. You know, the smoothest. Okay. Yeah, the smoothest, yeah. No, nobody in this market has actually really done that very well. I see Treetop to be the, the, the first company that will try the smoothest. Mm -hmm. The next thing we find is that Nobody does juice in, um, with, the, with the carbonated, carbonated juice. You know, carbonation, when you, are, when you apply carbonation on your product, mm -hmm. when it goes into your palates, it explodes the fruit. And you have that good experience yeah. of, the yeah. of the product. Yeah. So nobody's doing that. We see categories like energy drink is growing very well. Yeah. I was in Goma uh, last week and people are asking me, Bernard, when are you going to start making uh, treat of energy drink. So the category is good and it's great. And it's food. You yeah. never go wrong with food. Yeah. You never go wrong with food. Um, the last last question, um, the manufacturing sector in the country. Um, we've seen a lot of uh, problems. The growth has been a bit stagnant in terms of um, manufacturing growth. Um, a lot of problems with power, a lot of problems with other things. What have you experienced as the challenges affecting the industry right now that you'd like the government to um, the, big, the biggest uh, for us is uh, okay, energies for us has been okay. Uh, we have managed to put solar panels on top of our factory, thereby we reduce the cost of electricity by about 20%. Okay. There are companies in Kenya that are doing that okay. without having to invest any money, in the, any capex. So that on energy side, we're okay. The biggest challenge we find is on, um, is especially from an industry perspective, is the cost of doing business. When you import products from uh, raw material from Europe, mm. you have to pay a lot of taxes. You have to pay 25% in duty, you have to pay VAT, you have to pay a little bit development levy, you have to pay clearing and forwarding. So you find that your cost is, is high. I wish the government would come in and give incentives like, you know, like a 10 year tax holiday mm. to SMEs that are coming in to employ over 50 people. Mm. Because you see the other challenge you face, whether you're making profits or not, now we have to pay that tax, the 1% uh, turnover tax yeah. that Kenya, Re Kenya Revenue Authority has introduced. So that is hurting uh, small businesses like ourselves. Yeah. I wish the government would come in and eliminate that, allow tax holidays for 10 years, because they don't understand. They, you have to pay the PYE on the, on the 20th, on the 9th. You have to pay your VAT and excess duty. Secondly, we are paying a lot of taxes we are, this product is excisable. For, yeah. every, for every liter of juice, you're mm -hmm. paying 10 shillings excise tax. And you pay this tax on the 20th of the following month, whether you have sold, whether you have been paid or not. So hold up, how many taxes are those you have mentioned? It's over, over, over 10 or 10. Let's start, we have import duty mm -hmm. on the raw materials. You got the VAT, mm -hmm. you have the railway development levy, mm -hmm. um, you have the port charges, you have the excise tax. Those are five Those taxes are five already. Yeah, yeah. on one product. And you have to pay in advance. Before even you make profit. Before you make profit. Then, of course, you have the turnover tax and the corporation tax. And it's, 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 it's a lot. It's more than the taxation is, is too much. It's a huge issue. When I compare this with Europe, there's no taxes on juices in Europe. It's a food. So this excise tax, to me, the government needs to... Of course, yeah. I understand the government needs to raise revenue 
to build the roads, to yeah. provide security, infrastructure, infrastructure yeah. education, yeah. health, and all that. But the other places, I wish they could remove the excess tax, mm. I sell, I reduce the price, I sell more, and I pay more corporation tax. Yeah. And I employ more people, yeah. they collect more PYE. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. those are the issues we have. Okay. Yeah. We hope that they can listen and they will hear it. <laughs> yeah, one day, one day they, they will hear it. One day. All right, thank you so much. That was a great, interesting insight on the manufacturing sector in the country. We wish you the very best. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, I would like you to take this uh, product, ah. entertain your guests. It's yes. a strawberry and banana. Yes. It's an excellent mixer ah, and a chaser so with vodka. Yeah. And uh, have it with your family. I'm sure my family. friends have seen and they yes. will be coming. Very Thank soon. you very much. And also recommend it to them to yes. go and buy it in shops and supermarkets across yeah. Yeah. Kenya. All right. Thank you Thank so you. much. All right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's been very interesting. Thank you very much.